A Secret You Have to Know, Chapter 8. God's name is Yahuwah, or Yahweh, or Elohim. Jesus' name is Yahusha, or Yeshua, or Yahawasha. The Holy Spirit's name is Rahakadesh. These are their original Hebrew names. I come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. John 5, 43. Exodus 31, 12 through 14. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doeth sanctify you. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Every one that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. I want to welcome you back. Thank you for being here. Anyways, after Hitler was decided, it was decided that the Ashkenazi Jews that were persecuted in Eastern Europe needed their own homeland. Please note, please understand that the slaves that were sent to a foreign land to do forced labor for 400 years that were still being oppressed never received any consideration like this at all. Just note that, if you will. And people, they get bothered when we even bring up slavery today. They say, like, it's time to get over it. But after this Hitler event had happened, the world came together and justified a massive change. And the worst part the worst part of this all really is that people actually believed that Yahuwah did this, and this is a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. I wonder who owned the newspapers, and I wonder who preached this, and I wonder who published the books that said this. And I am making this video to show that it was not God that did this. But then again, using this strategy of order out of chaos, there was not many that could deny those who were now believed to be the true Jews. So they could not deny them the right to this homeland. The Rothschilds donated the land that they owned of what was known then as Palestine they donated this land to the United Nations. The United Nations then gave this land to those converted Khazarian Jews so that they would have a homeland and would never have to face this kind of oppression and slaughter they were submitted to during the Holocaust, even though it was never their homeland. So they basically bogarted or took this land, and thus the state of Israel was created. I think it was 1948. And so when they came over there and took over that land, they had wars against the inhabitants and was extremely violent. And this is why there is still conflict in that land today. Because these people came in and took land that they do not have a claim to. This is why we see Gamal Abdel Nasser. He was the second president of Egypt. In 1956, Abdel went on the television and the radio in the 50s and stated to the Ashkenazi, You left black and returned white. You are imposters and shall never see peace. 
This is the true history of the world. What you have been given is the history of the second major hijacker in this Christian religion, and it goes deeper than just Christianity. But today they use the Christians to support this agenda because the majority of Christians are just followers without discernment. And they feel that they are obligated to follow this agenda because they want to support Israel. But the true wickedness of their hearts are shown because while they support all of this, they persecute and hate the true Yaqadim. And they don't even want to understand their plight, which is more biblically tied to the God that they say they are serving. It's hypocrisy at its finest, and people will be judged for it. Remember the quote, I never knew you. And listen, please listen. This truth is being given to you not for hate or anything other than for you to come into the knowledge of the truth. And then you turn to the truth and live through it. The truth sets us free. I have presented and am presenting this information because we are truly at the crossroads. And depending on what you follow will determine your future and your relationship with Yah. Please hear that. Unfortunately, I wish it wasn't so black and white, but it clearly is. One path is the truth and Yah will cover you. The other is a lie and it will lead you into the arms of Satan if it hasn't done this already. I'm making this video currently and make all the videos currently about the plot twist that most people are not ready for in the end times. Now, I'm not knocking anyone. I'm just trying to educate everyone on the end times. And this lie you've been programmed to believe is a big part of it. This whole agenda has been used in order for Satan to take control of Yah's holy city or build a temple originally dedicated for Yahuwah, but Satan wants it dedicated to himself, which is why he will use all three religions that are tied to him. All the rulers of these three world religions are followers of the enemy of Yah. The created being in rebellion, see, he wants to use this people, all of them, to put his son as king, who will be the lawless one. Please hear that. And the thing is that everyone sees this and they know it. They know that the Jews are trying to rebuild a temple. They know that they just got red heifers in. They know that they say they are ready for the Messiah to come. These are words from some of the Jews that are in power right now. Well, these look like some very fine heifers from around the world. But what if I tell you that the Jewish dream to rebuild the temple is now over. There are things that are happening currently in Israel and around the world that clear out the way for the new Jewish temple. If you would ask the Jewish people if they would like the temple to be rebuilt, the vast majority of them would say yes. Out of the majority of Jews that would like to see the temple rebuilt, there are certain groups that are very active in doing everything that is needed for it to be rebuilt. So some believe that when the perfect candidate will be found, the building of the temple will begin. Why you can see the heifers peeking out of their crates, unblemished, beautiful, perfect, they look so perfect. Ma'am, what do you think about what the people think about them building the third temple? 
there are actually quite a few, and it just shows that God is giving the Jewish people the signs or an expectation that it's time for the soon coming Messiah. But there's a group specifically that has reestablished the Levitical priesthood. They started a school a few months ago, and they have a registry for those who are from the Levitical line that they can come and be trained and be ready to do the service in the temple. And they've also started a red heifer farm. The Temple Institute did with an Israeli farmer, and that, again, is with ritual purity, that they need to have a red heifer that meets Jewish law and has been supervised and doesn't have any white hairs. It's completely a red heifer to be able to be burned mixed with white or running water and then used to make everybody ritually pure and to be able to go into the temple. I mean, right now, if Jewish people just going on the Temple Mount can create a riot sometimes. So can you envision a scenario where they would allow the temple to be built? Oh, no. A lot of the scholars that I've spoken to talk about how the building of this next temple is really going to bring peace to Israel and to bring safety from her enemies. And so in that way, I can see that any, maybe leader that would be raised up or somebody that would be able to bring the nations together, especially those who might align with Israel, that there might be some agreement that the temple could exist there and this person could be set up in the temple. Listen, my dear ones. They know all of this. Everyone knows this in Christianity. But because they believe these people are genuine and holders of the covenant, that at some point Yah will intercede. But this will not happen because those people are not in covenant with Yahuwah. And everything that goes forth with them will be about leading into the satanic art of prophecy. And because people love the lie instead of the truth, they follow the path. I want to read you Thessalonians 2, 7 through 12. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusions, that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. This is in Thessalonians. Since given this calling, I have dedicated my life to telling the absolute truth, and you must understand it is your choice whether you want to believe it or not. It does not change the truth, nor does it change what will happen in this world. It just matters what side you are on. In these last days, it's imperative to break away from falsehoods and lies. And I know Yah is doing something today, allowing us all to understand this. 
I'm not special. He's just equipping me to spread biblically and academically so that if you still have a problem with the truth, it is because you love the lie and you will be condemned for it. That's on you. I know one thing. I know whom I serve and he wins. He has promised. He has promises for us, those who obey and love him. So that is what I will do. He said in Isaiah 46, 3 and 4, Listen to me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. And even to your old age, I am he. I am he, and even to whore hairs will I carry you. I have made, and I will bear, even I will carry, and will deliver you. He is my source, and he is my deliverer. I am living a life in service to him to do my part in preparing his kingdom, which is about helping prepare you. So, after this information, if you still don't get it and you want to argue, I suggest you find another channel or someone else to do this with. And I'm not being mean in telling you this. I'm just telling you the truth. My focus is on Yah and those who love him. You all that believe the lies, I'll pray for you. But to all of Yasharel, or Israel, natural and wild branches, let us live in the truth. Let us prepare our hearts. Let us keep Yah's commandments because we love him. Let us prepare ourselves for our coming true king while we also prepare for tribulation and a retreat from this world. Yah will sustain us, so if you don't truly believe that, you better start and grow your faith. Get in the word and seek out our Father in heaven like your life depends on it, because it does. He is our source, our hope. Oh, he is our source. He is our hope. Yahushua, our Savior, is waiting on us. Let us make ourselves ready. This is our time to be redeemed. No longer live in the lies. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. You be blessed now. You hear? Peace.